When my daughter was around five years old, she was watching me pack for a long road trip and she asked, Daddy, why do you have to travel so much? This is how I take care of our family, I told her. I travel for my work so I can care for, care, take care of you and mom and put food on the table. She was quiet for a moment and then she said the words that stung me harder than anything that has ever been said to me. If I eat less, can you stay home more? Holy freaking moly. Damn. Most people would be like, okay, the story would be, yes, I unpacked, I decided to stay. I kept packing. I kept, Why, pa I kept packing. You need to be true to yourself. And here's the thing. I knew what, what she was asking. I knew what she was going through. But I, I had to be selfish during that time. And I had to, the only reason I had to be selfish at, during that time is because I had a path and a goal that I wanted her to be able to achieve and her to be able to see. And knowing that I had to make this sacrifice now for the benefit of what was going to deliver down the line. And if I couldn't deliver what I wanted to deliver down the line, it's, it would actually be more detrimental to myself and to the family and to my growth and to her growth if I didn't complete what I was set out to complete. There's guilt that other people put on you. The worst guilt is you put on yourself. Every single decision, there's so much guilt that try, people, people try to put. Not only are you working so much, why do you need to go work out? You're going to eat that? Why are you dressed that way? That's just people's way of laying guilt on you. People are going to be constantly laying guilt on you. It's the guilt you put on yourself. You make a decision to be, this is, this is who I'm going to be. This is who I am. This is, this is the person. This is the person. And these are the consequences that come with being this person. What is the right approach to take with the people you love the most? Your wife, your mom, your dad, your kids. Have the conversation early, have the conversation often, but your results have to dictate what you're doing. That's it. If you, if you tell somebody, I need 90 days, you got 90 days to deliver. Don't turn five years later and say you didn't deliver in, in 90 days. If you say, hey, I need five years, yep. this is where I'm going, you better, you better deliver in those five. I told Michael, I said, I need 30 days. I need 30 days. Before you make any judgment on the training, anything that's going on, I need 30 days. 30 days turned into 15 years. And those results have to not only benefit you, they have to benefit them. They have to benefit them. All right. And everybody thinks by benefiting them, it just means, you know, from a financial standpoint. No, it's not, a fi it's not only a financial standpoint. If you're putting in all this time now, then when you do take that trip with the family and you do that, you're in that trip with that family. You've earned that time to be with them. When my daughter was younger, I would move to LA to train Kobe. That was one of those reasons why he goes, I need you to, I need you to live here. So I would, and my daughter was a volleyball player. I said, give me the volley, give me the volleyball schedule. And this is now from flying in from Orange County. So I would look at the volleyball schedule. I would look at Kobe's schedule from a workout, training, game schedule. I would look at it. I would literally catch a 7 a.m. flight from Orange County, land in Chicago, go to my daughter's volleyball game for 90 minutes, drive back to the airport, get on the 7.30 flight back, and be ready for the training session next day. Wow. How long did you do that? How, how long was that run? Seven years. Wow, buddy. Good for you, man. What a freaking story right there. Seven years. Now, did I make every game? No. Did I miss events? I did miss events. Was it a perfect situation? No. Does it come with the territory? It does. Unfortunately. It, it does. This is what I'm going to do, and this is what I'm willing to do. Do those things match?
You know, everybody likes to tell you, yeah, I want to be the best on this, this, and this. I tell all the people on set all the time, I get that, listen, I'll, I'll outwork anybody. I'll do anything. I'll do this. And I'll say, okay, I'll see you tomorrow for the workout. What time's the workout? I need you here at 3.30 in the morning. Uh, I can't do that. What do you got going on at 3.30 in the morning? And usually when I say 3.30, they think about 3.30 in the afternoon. So everybody says they're going to do they're going to do these things, and very few will actually follow through on them. Did you ever fire a client? Oh, I fired more clients, and I've I've returned more money than I've actually kept. Any names that people would know about? Oh, tons of names. Okay, so you fire clients. You're like, I'm not I'm- high end individuals, high end sports, wealthy, all stars, all that. I had one individual right in the middle of the game. He was just like, here. I, said, I, I told one of my sisters, I go into the office, grab my checkbook. I wrote my check. I said, here, get out. My obligation and your obligation is to yourself, to your family, to the organization, to your fans, to the people that sit down and watch you on TV. And it's also to winning. Winning wants to see how loyal you are to it. What are you going to do to get there and to stay there? And most people aren't. They're just, they they aren't. Why though? It's too hard. Same thing, still it's it, too hard. It's just, it, it's just, it, 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 it's just, it's too, too hard. Is the reward worth it? Winning is everything. When I asked Kobe, you know, I have this thing in the book, I said the language of winning. Kobe's answer was, I said, I said, winning is everything. 